I told that uh, the use of labor-based contracts is rife in moment. Uh, maybe, Governor, you might want to tell us uh, the situation, how that is working out, whether it is your preferred approach to implementation of projects, or whether you are taking some policy shift. Chairman, <clears throat> that was true between 2013 and 2017, but we have since moved to full contract. Like, our stadium was labor-based, and that is why we are having a lot of challenges because that required a technical person to do, but when you use labor-based labor uh, uh, kind of uh, engagement, gives us a lot of problems. So we have put, since shifted to full contract from 2018. Maybe, maybe for the benefit of those who might not understand what we are talking about, what is a labor-based contract? What is the problem with it that has prompted you to shift to another approach? Chairman, the quality of work that was done was very poor because uh, people who are engaged were not technically qualified. Like when you're constructing a stadium and use labor-based contract, in fact, it was divided to the five sub-counties. There was a section for Cometis, a section for Chepalungu, a section for Sotik, Comet Central, all the five sub-counties. And when you see the sections that were constructed, it, 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 it's actually the face of chaos, as you had indicated earlier on, Chairman. It was not very, very impressive as such. So, how, how, how do you, I mean, how, how does that even work practically? So, you've got a stadium. Yeah, we have a stadium. Then you've divided it into sections five sections or sub counties. You get labor from Ometis, you have your section. So, isn't there design? Isn't there technical specifications? Isn't there bills of quantity for the entire project? or each sub-county has its own? There was, but it was not followed because these are, these are laymen and women. So interpretation even of the design was very poor. In fact, from what we did last week, the analysis that were done by the technical people, the design was not followed. And a section is almost falling. Because it for which sub-county? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mention the sub-county, but they know themselves. <laughs> No, but you know, this is, uh, we, I don't think we have dealt with this kind of scenario before because it also helps us to provide advice to other counties. So under such circumstances, who is held responsible for um, um, given some of those defects that you're talking about? Under such circumstances, it's very difficult because there is no contract side, so we cannot hold anyone liable for the defects. Which legal the provision would one use to do a stadium under a labor-based contract under the Public Procurement Act? I don't think we have that. Yeah, we don't have it. Or, or general, or maybe Treasury? Is labor-based contract of such uh, capital projects supported by any law? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, labor-based is one of the methods that we stretch. But for a project of uh, this nature, you cannot go labor-based. It's like when we are doing bush clearance, that one now you can use labor based. But these are very technical work which cannot uh, fall under labor based. Because the Therefore, it was 300, 300 million or thereabouts budget? Yeah. Yes, it was 300. Treasury, your view on that before I come to Senator Bumet? Yes, Chair, I think as the uh, or he is putting it. Because now such a project needs some skills, which of course the labor base cannot do. So, of course, that one is very difficult for one to use it when you are, especially the magnitude of the amount of money which is invested in that. And as you are putting it, because now if you use the other, the other method, the programming method,